Hello Internet, today we're going to be looking at NeoPixel lights. I have them wrapped around my, my head because of course I do. Uh, and then we're also going to be using Arduinos to power those. So we have an Arduino Uno here. Uh, this is straight from the Arduino.org, I think. Uh, and then I have a few other ones too. Uh, we're not going to be using this, but here's another one. Uh, you can see it right there. It's a Arduino Nano. Uh, these are super cheap. They're like $3 online, uh, but I figured I'd throw those out there. They're less reliable because they're from a, a third party, but these are about $30 and you can pick them up pretty much anywhere you can get a microcontroller. And I've never played with one uh, for our, actually it's not back there anymore. Uh, Datacube is using a, actually a nano, but yeah. We're going to use this for a little uh, wearable project that the, for some reason, whenever I get these LEDs, they always end up around my head. Uh, the project has nothing to do with my head, but that's just where we started. So we need to connect these. Uh, there's a, there's a plug here onto this. And so hopefully that's super simple. I have some uh, basic Arduino stuff. This is actually the simple starter project. Uh, I can actually open another one. I think that'll probably break the the zoom that I did here. But if you go to say examples, oops. Okay, that's been <laughs> all kinds of troublesome. But if you just go to, they have a Adafruit NeoPixel. These actually aren't NeoPixel lights. These are a knockoff. They work. I've tested the strip. Uh, but you can get NeoPixel lights come in uh, different lengths per, per meter. This is a one meter strip. Uh, this one has 144 pixels. Uh, so they're, it's the most dense strip you can do. Uh, they have other versions that come with like 60 pixels per strip and those are gonna be cheaper. It's the same style of pixel. It's just a square pixel here. I don't know if you can see it cause it's wrapped up and around my head, <laughs> but it's the same style. They're just spread out more. Uh, and that makes them cheaper. So you can get them for like $20. I don't know international prices, but I assume it's pretty similar everywhere you go. Uh, so you can get them from Adafruit or Amazon or wherever. So anyway, what we're going to do is hook this up. Turns out that's really easy. If you look at Adafruit's site, they have a capacitor that they wire up and a bunch of other things. The interesting thing is this needs five volts. I think, uh, yeah, five volts which there's actually a five volt out on this chip. And so uh, there's an entire power sector here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's, oh, that's gonna be hard. Hold on, I got this. This is gonna work great. And it doesn't really like to focus. Ta-da, and it's backwards. I'll fix that in post. But anyway. <laughs> You can see there's power there. Then there's that five volt thing. So the way that works is you have, ooh, we're back. All right, so you have these uh, five volt outs. Effectively what that does is it takes the input power, which we're taking out of our USB port, and then it will take five volts and send it down that rail. Uh, so we can actually plug right into that. Uh, so I have these little jumper cables. And so what we need to do is we need to plug the black one, I like using black for ground into ground here. Uh, so there's ground, they're marked in the nice white. So you don't really screw that up. Plug in ground first because that's just what you do. <laughs> and then you wanna match it up here. So there's three colors here. These strips are pretty consistent. There's a red wire, a green wire, and a black wire. Uh, so the black wire is ground just like I used here. The red wire is your power, it's your constant power source and then the green wire is going to be your programming one uh, so that's going to be how you actually tell it what to do so the red and black are both constant the green is variable and we actually get to control that so i'm going to plug the black in here uh, let's see if i can get that on camera but it's it's basic you just plug it in boop, and you're good uh, then we can plug in the white one if you do this backwards, uh, your Uno will shut off. So if you plug in the power, the five volt power into say the, the ground and vice versa, 
it will it will freak out and realize some something's not right and shut down, which is better than blowing up your board. Uh, so if we plug the white one, uh, the just the colors that I have, these strips are actually kind of cool. Uh, so it's, they come as like a wide ribbon cable, and you can actually just tear them as you want. Uh, so I have used these for other projects, so that's why they're like this. Uh, and then, ooh, that. <laughs> Plug in ground and we have the five volts. So this should have power now. Uh, and then we need this plugged into our six over here. So the pins are numbered. You can't really see that. I'm not gonna bother zooming in, but there's numbered pins down the side here. This is the other side of the board. And so these are effectively your numbered outputs. And so by default, the NeoPixel library uses the pin six. So that's what we're going to do. Actually make sure we get this right. If you get it wrong, it, it doesn't work. Uh, speaking from experience, done that. I spent like two months trying to figure out why this strip in particular wouldn't light up. I was plugging it into the wrong port. Uh, and so we can plug this in as the final one. Uh, if we can actually, there we go. I had, it was easier when it was actually up in the air. But anyway, this is sort of what it looks like when it's plugged in. And we should be good. Cool. There we go. And now it starts. Uh, so I actually had loaded up DataCube, uh, the DataCube test thing, just to see if this works. So that's why that's why you saw those lights. That's sort of the thing we programmed way back. So like I said, this is the basic simple starter project. There's nothing really here, but I can actually just upload that. If I click upload, I think it's gonna break because I don't think I have it set up to go to the correct place. It's currently set to go to COM4 and I tried to switch it so it wouldn't it wouldn't work. Uh, but it looks like I was wrong uh, because we're, we're slowly moving. Uh, we got some green lights coming up. That's, that seems really slow to me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. We'll see. Let's see, delay. Oh, I have it set to only 16 pixels. That's the problem. There's 144 on this strip. So let's actually uh, save that. Some files are marked as read only, resave this sketch. Okay. Let's save this as our Arduino Uno NeoPixel test. All right. And now we have the number of pixels actually set to the correct value. So we won't just get this bottom 16 lighting up. We can redeploy this and it should start doing its thing. It looks like it just, this uh, basic thing just kind of crawls up. Uh, so one of the things to keep in mind, I guess, is these are very, uh, ti it's all based on timing. So the timing of this board is what is actually determining this. Uh, so if that timing gets off a little bit, it goes a little bit funky. I hope that doesn't make too much sound. Anyway, I'm imagining we're going to run out of power eventually because this is not really designed to power all 144 of these. Uh, and also this is stateful. It maintains its state. So we're constantly updating these pixels, but we're not removing it. So I, I now have just green constantly going up. Effectively, we want to remove these. Uh, and you can kind of see, oops, see here, all we're doing as we step up this light strip is setting a pixel to green, uh, 150 green. <laughs> and then showing that pixel and then delaying and moving up the line. So it's just iterating over every pixel with a set delay. And the good news is we, we didn't run out of, uh, didn't run out of power. So this whole strip actually lit up instead of, if you run out of power, like if I tried to make all of these white, like pure white, what would end up happening is it would draw too much power and we'd, we'd our circuit would break. So that, that doesn't work and it'll just turn off. <laughs> the board will still run and every, it will try to do its thing. You, your, your strip just will not do what you think it's going to. So anywho, 
that is setting up this. What I wanted to do though is a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna try to <laughs> do this in a little bit more sane way, kind of losing a connection there because I'm moving it all over the place. Okay, so as that crawls back up, I'm going to rearrange my desk because this was not a great way to, there's a wire in front of my keyboard. Anyway, <laughs> what we want to do is change this delay. So currently it waits half a second before it lights up a pixel. Let's change that to 100 pixels a second. Right, so one over 100. Uh, actually, it's gotta be 1,000 over 100 because it's in milliseconds. And so if we just put 1,000 and then divide it by the number of iterations per second we want, we'll, we'll get what we want. So this will give us 100 iterations per second. So if I actually start this now, just to kind of demonstrate this, it should go way faster like that, <laughs> which is great. It means that everything is working. The problem is it's still slow. So I think for this, we this just needs to be something basic. I haven't gotten all the parts for the projects I'm using this for. Uh, so we're just kind of introducing this again. What I want to do is actually have like a trace. So let's actually increment this by our trace length. And so you can actually go above these strip sizes. Uh, so I can actually say uh, define the trace length. And we lost that connection again. Ah. <laughs> I'm drawing too much power. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's do that. <laughs> just for, just for now. <laughs> oh, this is going well. All right. So now that I've made a mess of this, let's do our trace length, increment that. And so we'll set our trace length equal to say five, which means there'll be five pixels long that it will it will go. And then we're just going to have that do a ring around it. And so we're gonna still use, let's use gr uh, red. Uh, if I could type, there we go. Cool, so we're gonna use red. I uh, remember color is red, green, blue. So red, green, blue. And so we're going to show that. And that's going to set the current pixel. But what we also want to do is do a pixels set pixel color of I minus the trace length to pixels color zero, zero, zero. So we're gonna turn that pixel back off. And so that should effectively give us only a five, a five pixel length that is on at any one time. And then it should just loop around over and over again. Uh, but the loop isn't going to happen because we don't repeat this ever. So instead, let's say int i equals zero. and then while true, and that will replace all of this. Then at the very end, let's increment that index. And then we want to take a mod of that as well, based on that value that we were using. So instead i is going to be equal to i plus one mod this value. And so what that means is when it reaches that value, modulus is going to get us the remainder. And so the remainder of, in this case, 149, if you take 148 and divide that by 149, the remainder is 148. So you just get your value back. But as soon as we get up to that value, it automatically wraps it back around and gets us back to zero. So now we're right back where we started. We're back at zero. So with this, hopefully we now have a loop and so this should actually just keep drawing pixels in a circle around it 
and it should actually move pretty quickly uh, because we we have that uh, 100 pixels. It'll it will move 100 pixels per second because we have that delay value there. So I need to plug this back in and deploy it, and then hopefully, yeah, we get that. So now I have like this tracing red beacon almost. Uh, so this is sort of, I'm going to need this for, for the project I'm working on. I'm also going to need to sew, but that's, that's not relevant here. <laughs> so once I get the parts for that, we'll pick this back up uh, and they should be here by the end of the week. But I just kind of wanted to reintroduce uh, the Arduino, oops, kind of making a mess of it, but the Arduino and, uh, show it in a little bit quicker way how to actually set up this whole thing it's actually fairly easy and you don't need uh, previously I had, I had like a capacitor set up to kind of uh, protect the voltage and all this other stuff this is faster this is easier and as far as i can tell it's it's the same kind of solution it does the exact a similar thing uh so yeah there you go a <laughs> basic basic arduino stuff and this is obviously simple, but that's sort of the point. So anyway, I thought that was cool. I will leave this here. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for what to do. I did buy those Arduino Nanos. I bought a few of them. Uh, so this is actually a 3D printed like car. It's not ho hooked up yet, but you can see it's got like a little hobby motor on there. Uh, the Arduino Nano or yeah, Nano and then like a nine volt battery. So this can actually intelligently power this motor. Uh, it can't steer or anything because I didn't really design for that yet, but it, it's a thing and I don't really know what to do with it. So if you guys have ideas, I'd love to hear them because I, that that's it's just a block of plastic right now. But I'm going to be playing with this on my own time. So if you guys have ideas, let me know in the comments or if you have ideas for other things we can do with Arduinos or just IoT things, let me know about that as well. And I'd love to give them a try. So. That's it for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. So until then, see internet.